Hey guys, my name is Aaron from Geeky Lemon Development and welcome to our Xcode tutorials. In this tutorial, we're going to be learning all about random plist generators within the Swift language. Now, before we jump straight into this, if you enjoy this tutorial and want to further your knowledge and learning ability, why not enroll in one of the many courses we have available on iOS development? All links for these will be down below in the description. But let's jump straight in to the tutorial. In this lecture, we're going to create our very own random plist generator. Now, what is a plist and how do we create these generators? Well, basically, a plist is known as a property list and it allows us to create a list of a file, a document, away from either the Swift. Uh, class, the storyboard class, which can contain a bunch of information. It's something that we can freely edit. We can come and edit and add in more, take stuff away, which doesn't affect any of the code that we create whatsoever. It's a really handy way to update and add content in when and when we want without adding any code. And then what we do with that property list that contains all that information is we then take it and then take bits of information from it to display it within the application. Now, what we're going to be creating, again, is a property list or a plist generator. And we're going to be using images, something different that we haven't done before. We've generated numbers, we've generated words in the past. Let's do an actual physical file, an image file. So we're going to create a property list that's going to contain probably around about four or five different images. And then we're going to create the ability to randomly pick one of those images from the property list to then display within our application. Ultimately, what we're going to learn in this lecture is going to set us up for our next lecture, which we create a vast, huge, randomly generating plist application known as car statistics. Uh, but we'll go on to that a little bit later, but this is going to set up the foundations for us. So what we need to do then is simply create the property list. We need to create it and store it with all the image files that we have. Now, we first need to get the image files. So if you want to use the exact images that I'm going to be using, make sure you check out the downloadable resource attached to this lecture. We not only can you get all the images that we can be using, but you can also check out the full source code too. Or alternatively, you can go on to use your own images. So we've got six images in total, as you can see. It's just six different landscape images, and they're all kind of uh, named image one all the way up to six. Names don't really matter. Just obviously you need to know what the names are so you can reference them. So we need to import these into our project so our project's aware of them and we can use them. So go to the assets folder, which is where we store all of our images. And we're simply going to drag and drop now these six images inside. And then once they're in, we're pretty much good to go. The project now has them. We can reference them, use them, and distribute them wherever we want within the application. So now we've got the images in, let's create the property list and store those images in it. So the reason we do that is because we need to access this property list to get the images. So to create this, just click on your project at the top there, right click on it and go to new file. In the new file, just simply scroll down to where we have the ability to add in a property list and press next. There we go. And we can give our property list a simple name. Now it's entirely up to you what you want to call it, but I'll call it our image list. There we go and create that and generate that inside of our project. So once it's kind of updated and generated, we now have our image list dot p list. It's very similar to the info dot p list, as you can see. It's just it's a complete blank one and we get to create and add stuff in from scratch. So what we need to do then by default, it's set to a dictionary, which is what we want, because a dictionary can contain multiple arrays. And we want to have an array. We're not going to have multiple. We only really want one. But what we do is press the little plus symbol and it creates a new item. I'm going to call this new item images with a capital I. Now, this is very important. It's very important that you, uh, you know, how you type in the name of the plist and the name of the array because we're going to be referencing those in the code. So once we created this uh, images here item, this is by default set to a string. We need to select it and update it to an array. Now, by doing that, creates a little drop down menu where we can then add in, if I click the little plus symbol, items inside of the array. So we have our images. If I go back to them, if you can remember, they're called image one to image six. So we're going to type in the first item here, 
is image one. And again, they have capital I's, don't they? Yeah, they've all got capital I's. Again, it is case sensitive. So image one, and if I select the item, press Command C, I can then press Command V, so I've got six all in total. So starting at zero, all the way to five, gives me six items. All I gotta do then is update each name here to make sure we've got each one added in. So now, basically, we have six items each item equals a different image name, which is the string name, and they're all placed inside of our images array within our image list dot p list. And that's literally all we need to do. So what I meant earlier by is you can come back, add more stuff in, take stuff away without affecting the code. This is where you do it. If you want to add more images in, just add in more items. If you want to change the images, rename them. If you want to take some away, delete the item. And this won't affect any of the code that we're going to be setting up. So it's really good. So for future updates, you want to add in extra content. It's really, really handy and really easy to do so. So we've created the plist. It now contains the images. What do we do with it now? Well, we're going to jump into our main storyboard and quickly design a brief interface that will allow us to press a button to display one of these random images inside of our image view. So let's do that now. So let's jump into our main storyboard. Now in here, we're going to click on our library and we're going to drag and drop in a button. So I'll just place it there and space it out. Now I'll rename it to say random image, please. There we go. And then we'll add in another object, which is of course going to be an image view. So if I space this out as well, now what I'll do is I'll quickly just put an image inside of it just so we can see exactly how it looks. Why don't we do aspect fill? So it scales in proportion and then clip to bounds, just gonna crop it in its edges. There we go. That's how the images are gonna be displayed. So let's quickly get rid of that one now. There we go. So it's a very simple, very brief interface that we can use to demonstrate and see exactly how these random plist generators work. So we need to create an action for the button. We need to now create an outlet for the image view. So I'll get rid of our side panel there, bring up our assistant editor. Now in here, we're gonna space out our little outlet section and space out our action section. Select the image view, do control click or right click and drag and drop this over and call it our image view. There we go, connect that up. And then the same for our button, but in the action section, making sure it is an action. And I'll call it our random image and connect that up. Perfect. So we've got both of those in. We can now close our assistant editor. So now we've done that. We've done the brief interface, created the actions and outlets. We've got our image list.plist created, which has got our dictionary array with all the items inside. We're now ready to start coding it to make it actually do something. So it all takes place with inside of our button. So I'll space this out. Well, most of it takes place inside of our button. Uh, what it does and what we have to do is we first need to reference and find the image list.plist file within our project directory. Once we found it, we need to access it and all the information inside of it, select the array that we created inside and then pick a random element from that array. That's what we need to do. It sounds quite simple, but yet quite complex at the same time. It's, it, it's a weird situation to be in. So what we first need to do is we need to find the file within our project. So we create a let and we call it our path because we're gonna find the path for resource for where it simply is. Now the path is gonna equal our bundle, which is our project. Then we do dot main as the main bundle, the main section of our project. Then we do our bracket and we're adding in our uh, for resource. Uh, where is it? Oh no, we're missing off the path there. So main dot path there we go, for resource. So we've got our bundle.main.path, you know, where we're directing it to, for resource. And in our string here, we do our two quotation marks. And this is where we reference the name of our plist file. So we called it image list. So we type in, again, it is case sensitive, image uh, list. Then of type is the type of document that it is, which in our case is a plist. And we end that there with a bracket. So whenever we reference now the pathlet that we just created, it's gonna be referencing the image list.plist within our project's directory. 
So then what we need to do is we need to kind of get our NS dictionary because remember it starts out as a dictionary. That's what the plist file actually is. And then we need to get the contents of the file inside of it. So we need to get all the information inside. We need to gather it before we select a certain part of it. So we create another letter and call it our dicks, which is just simply for short for dictionary. Type in our NS uh, dictionary now. There we go. Uh, and then what we do is do our bracket for our contents of and the contents of uh, file, oh, I've added it in there, let's type that in again. Contents of file, there we go, selected the wrong one. So our contents of file, because again it is a file, and in this highlighted section here, we're getting this information directly from the path um, kind of let we created just up above. Now it does need to be an optional value here, so we just add in our exclamation mark to close that up, because it can contain something at the same time it can contain nothing because it doesn't know what's going to be inside until it tries to reference it. So now we have a little warning on our dicks uh, kind of let there. That's because we're not referencing it within the code. But now what we need to do is we need to create a additional variable which is going to be linked to a string that we get to distribute throughout uh, the project to display the random image. Now there's many ways in which we can simply do this. We could create the variable outside of it so we can reference it throughout the project or we could simply just simply you know set it up and create it inside now we'll create it up inside first so we create a let and call it our data now this is going to equal our dicks up above and then we do dot object and we need to select the one that simply got the four key which is the first one there now the four key here is basically equaling to one of the items inside of it so if I do our kind of two quotation marks there, the item that we want, if I go to our image.plist here, is the images array. We want to get that array and then pick a random element from it. So we need to equal that now to our images. Remember, it has a capital I. So in here, we type in our images. Again, with the capital I. Then after we do space as exclamation mark a string. So we determining the format of what it's going to be. So now we have a warning on the data, and that's just simply because, again, we're not referencing it just yet. But again, what we're doing now, if we reference the data, that's now equaling our dictionary up above, which links back to our path, which is our image list.plist. And it's equaling the array inside of our image uh, list here as a string. So everything's going to be read in string format. So it just knows what the actual data format is going to be before we start applying it in any object. So now we get to apply it into an object and it's all going inside of our image view. So we grab our image view and we do dot image. And then what we do for this then is simply go on to equal this to the basic and simple UI image function. Uh, and then we simply have it go on to be our bracket here of our named. There we go in our string. And in the string is where the magic now simply takes place. So normally you just have it equal like something like image one and it will work perfect. But we don't want to do that. We want it to equal to a random image inside of that array inside of that info. Uh, not info, sorry, the uh, image list dot p list. So how do we do this? Well, we grab the data let that we created just up above because that contains the array. And then what we do is do dot random element. There we go. And that with a bracket. So that's going to pick a random element directly uh, from that kind of let just up above. Now we have a little warning on there because it can't convert the data. So just after the two brackets, exclamation mark there to kind of close up uh, the optional wrap. Now what's it kind of uh, saying right here right now? So it cannot convert a value of type character to expect argument of string. Now for some reason, it's not liking how we've added that in. And I think this is because it's trying to clash between it being a character and a string. So we've really hard coded this now to bracket off the string there. Does that then affect and update that for us? There we go. That removes it. So just by pointing to the two brackets there, it kind of sets it in stone that it is a string. It was kind of like wasn't too sure if it was a character or a string. They're both strings. They're both text. But obviously, you know, we're trying to equal the image view to a string, not a character. So that's simply all we need to do. It's quite cool, isn't it? We have our data dot random element picking a random element from our images array inside of our image list, which this code doesn't need to be touched again. 
If you wanted to add in like 10 more images, just go to your image list, .p list, add in 10 more images. And it all works perfect. You haven't got to adjust the code whatsoever. So let's go to build and run. Let's actually randomly generate an image file inside of our project. This is quite exciting, isn't it? So we'll just wait for the simulator to now load up. I mean, we see our random p list generator. And you got to remember, all we've told it to do, technically, all we've told it to do is to randomly pick an element from an array inside of our image list .p list. We haven't told it to technically display this image inside of this image view, even though it does anyway. You know, that's kind of what it's set up to do, but we haven't done anything. It all relies on the p list, which is really cool. So random image, please. There we go. Random image, and I keep pressing it. So you are going to get some repeat quite often. Again, there's only six images to choose from. So the likelihood of them repeating is very, very high. But if you had like 50 images, the chances of them repeating are, are, are a lot lower. So, you know, just, just bear that into mind if you, if you start to see like the same image appear like four times in a row and you only got like three images, just bear that in mind. But every time I press it, it just it's picking a random element at complete random. It could be the same one. It could be a different one. It's completely random. And every time I press it, we gain that happen. How cool is that? You've got to admit that is pretty cool. So again, this is all coming from that P list. And this sets us up quite nicely for our next lecture. Now in the next lecture, we're going to be using P list generators, but a bit more advanced. We're going to add a lot more to them to create a car statistic application. And what it's going to allow us to do is to press the button and it's going to provide us with a car, a car image. But then it comes with six more statistics. So we're going to create the P list a little bit more crazier. We're going to have dictionaries within arrays within dictionaries. And it's going to have a bunch of statistics per each item. So where at the moment we're only generating one piece of information in our car statistics application, we're going to generate, again, one piece of information, but it comes with like 10 more bits of information, which is so much more complex, so much more exciting, and we're going to be creating that all within our next lecture.